All right, today is uh, Tuesday, May 30th, 2023. Spoonbill 34 back at the 46 Hudson. Um, did get some progress done. I pretty much got the trunk done with all the welding and uh, pat repair work that I had to do. Uh, it turned out pretty good. I was happy with it. Uh, it was a lot of welding. I'll kind of show you that. This is the uh, the most difficult part was this uh, this piece that I put in right here all along the front. And for this this piece of uh, metal was completely missing from in the middle here. There was nothing. And so um, had to end up. I did weld this piece in. Used cardboard templates which worked pretty good for everything. And then I uh, got this, first I put these two patch panels in here, cut it back, cut the rust out, cut it back to good metal, and then the two patch panels, I welded them in. And I also welded a piece of steel right here from left to right that butts up against this piece of steel, supports it. This was the most difficult part, this uh, groove for the uh, weather stripping. I was able to get that back in there. It does fit. You can see, just shove it in there. Uh, what I ended up doing was I welded, or used a plasma cutter, cut a, like a 9 16 wide piece of 18 gauge steel. I bought a big, four by eight sheet of 18 gauge steel. I think it was like 85, 90 bucks. Cut one out and welded from here all the way to this other side. And that was my first edge that I got, this, the horizontal edge. And then I had to do the same thing with this, this back vertical edge, you know, weld all this and I welded that on the back side it kind of uh, it didn't uh, project as far to the back so I was able to catch this first edge a little bit and weld it on the back side and then finally the third one was uh, the top one here so again cut it out with the plasma cutter about 9 16 inch wide steel and weld that in I mean, it, we're talking a lot of welding here, you know, and I used the uh, air, put air to it. The compressor was working overtime. About every five spot welds, then you blow it down to keep the keep the metal from warping, keep the heat under control, and it turned out pretty good. I was happy with that. So this was the, the most difficult edge. Got the new tub in. Uh, what I, the silver you see is, uh, um, rust bullet is what I use. And, uh, all these welds, everything that I did, um, uh, I sandblasted it. I have a spot sandblaster from Harbor Freight and a big one. And I went in and, uh, after I was done welding, I sandblasted all the welds. And then I came and, and uh, and the sand, you know, creates quite a mess, but it did a good job of getting the surface ready for paint. So I got rid of all the, you know, this dirty welds and everything. And once that was done, vacuumed out the trunk here, tried to seal off the interior from getting sand in it, and um, vacuumed and blew it out with a leaf blower. Did that about, you know, all of, a couple hours worth of that finally got it down to a minimum and then I was able to see any pinholes that I might have missed I came back with a welder and just hit those areas a little bit to, to make sure that it was solid there was no pinholes and uh, you know hit that with a wire brush and then I was able to paint it and uh, I painted it with the uh, rust bullet this is like their they have their first uh, coat which is the silver It'd be nice to have the, the uh, POR 15 with the nice gloss black, but, but Rust Bullet, they, you have the silver, 
and you do two coats of that the prep work isn't as bad on rust bullet you can uh, pretty much paint over the rusted metal um, it's got to be clean I clean it with you know and I did after the blasting and after the spot welding I that I had to do for the pinholes a little bit it wasn't much hit it with acetone to clean it also and then hit hit it with the rust bullet and I put two coats of it on there and it worked out pretty good and I could go back over this with like a black shell which is another coating but this is all going to be covered with the original mat I still have that it's not in the best shape I might buy a new one but I'm going to put that back in there but what you see is I pretty much did the whole interior um, I'm going to zoom you in a little bit here on this hopefully I don't screw this up too bad so you can kind of see as I come in the, the amount of welding you know in the corners that was done all the way up to the tail lights on both sides it was rotted and I cut the what you got to do obviously is you got to cut the rust out you can't leave that crap in there it'll just come back on you so I did cut the rust out and uh, I did uh, spot or sandblast it after that so I know my surface is good I'm not gonna paint this car right away so I left my welds I ground them down and uh, basically painted this area I probably try and paint this silver to and touch it up so it matches the original rusty gray color trying and, and just and I just want to enjoy it and drive it you know so I'll put this in and I'll show you before I can ever get the trunk to, uh, to latch and now I can get it to latch which I'm pretty happy about that um, I have to get a Oh, uh, put a gasket around the gas tank here. I have to. I don't. I don't want any mice getting in here, so I want everything sealed off. And so I'm going to do that also. Um, I'm not sure why, but Hudson, they have this piece of fabric that covers this big hole over your differential, and, and you know that. I don't like that too much because mice will probably get in there. So I. Probably put a piece of flat metal over that or maybe there's a something better that can be used but we'll shut the trunk this is the original boards I put this copper brace in there just to hold that up because you know peels and whatnot you can't see that let me turn it up here there maybe now you can see that but that's that's right up in this area here but let me shut it so to shut the trunk it's got a nice latch system here. You raise it all the way up, it holds it up. And then you bring it down. And I've adjusted it some here with the four bolts, the hinges, to get the best fit. And I'll go over to this side. And now that is solid. You can't get that open. And it, it doesn't, and it fits pretty decent for I mean this piece was you know moving around freely so was this one and and this piece of steel I went in with turned out pretty good the gaps not too bad you know pr pretty decent about the same on both sides and here it's almost flush and here it's flush so I'm, the gaps are not the greatest but they're they're good though they're it's flat both sides and I'm happy with that and the trunk latches when I first got this car that's where all the rust was and I got that taken care of other thing I did was I put blinkers uh, on it turn the trunk that way and you can open it up now I'll show you the I spent all day on blinkers and I did got that done So I've got the blinkers, I took the, uh, there's a junction block here, 
and then separated the high filaments, brighter filaments, and ran them up to the steering column, an aftermarket switch that I put in. So I do have those working. And the brake lights come on. Now the switch. Probably have to get a different switch because the switch seems to uh, not, I have to pull it back a little bit. It doesn't want to tighten the spring up or if it's not all the way back, the brake lights stay on. So I'll shut this. All right, now, yesterday, on my Memorial Day, I went to uh, Marketplace and I got these Coker tires. They're, I paid uh, 600 for the set, set of four of them. These are radials, these aren't bias. And the tread, you know, is uh, still has the nubs on it. A guy put them on a Corvette and he didn't like the look of it. And God, I, I would consider that pretty much new. So the I looked in the on on the website. These are 215 15s. They're about 330 each is what the price is. And then you gotta add shipping and tax and all that crap. So you're probably close to around 1500 So I was pretty happy about that, but I had to drive, you know, three and a half hours one way. All the way up to near Minneapolis and then three and a half hours back and but I think it was it was worth it the ones on the car are pretty bad the original ones you know you can't they're cracked I can't use them let me uh, take you with me the interior of the car and you can see that's the blinker that I put in that was an all-day affair getting the wires all the way from the trunk up to here the ones in the front up to here now let me show you the ones in the front just kind of going around the car there's the ones in the front and I use the uh, old car plant here. Now I'll put on the uh, car plant. Somebody knows that you can do that or not. And then the headlights, these are the original uh, headlights still. Now we'll just do a test to see if uh, my blinkers work. They should work up here. Yeah, so we got blinkers there, so that's a good sign. Now let's see if the uh, blinkers work on the other side. Yeah, so I think it looks good that way. So so what you're hearing is a six volt fuel pump. Shut that off. It's 
So now what I have going here, I'll bring you to the side. I have a tire machine and a uh, tire machine and a wheel balancer. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this car on this two post lift that I have. I just got this two post lift this last winter. I had my wife's Ford Edge on there. I'm going to try and get this big Hudson on there. And surprisingly, this car that you would think weighs like 6,000 pounds, it's not that bad. It weighs about 3,500 pounds, from my understanding. So, so I got to pull ahead a little bit and set the jacks. New uh, white walls installed. The original ones here are pretty bad, and I should be able to drive this down the road here pretty soon. But thanks for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.